Hey, you know, I heard you got a, a phone call recently from the ADL, that is the Anti-Defamation League. That is correct. Wow. And uh, do you work for the ADL or something? How, how do you know these guys? Um, basically, they were putting in a program um, in a local community that I was involved with. And um, I basically didn't think they were the uh, person, the group of people that should be sponsoring a program that sh that's around our children in school. So they gave me a nice, uh, friendly wake-up call. At that point, I called the... Uh, <laughs> on your cell I... phone, right? No, I don't. Oh, yeah, actually You're... on the cell phone. Yeah, oh, cell my phone. gosh. Uh, wow. So they says, uh, we put you on the radar list. So then I called the um, FBI Organized Crime Squad, talked to a special agent, and he said to me, most people do not realize the ADL is part of organized crime. That's right. I did some research, and the ADL um, is, well, run by the Bronfmans. Correct. The Bronfman crime family, the mob. Yes. <laughs> and they're training our terrorists, or our law enforcement, that you and I, or, uh, well, anyone who believes in freedom of speech or the Constitution or men who wear jeans and T-shirts um, are terrorists. I mean, you know what? I checked out their website. It was kind of interesting because, well, I learned a lot. And, uh, I mean, the thing that sticks out in my mind the most is that the only people in the world that can be racist are white Christian males. Well, that's based on uh, the per the uh, their agenda. You know, I, I, the reality is there's racism and racism in every race in the world. It's, it's not uh, aligned just to white males. It's aligned to you know every every nationality and every race you can think of. There's a racism there. Yeah, but the, I mean, the ADL, it's ridiculous. I looked at the website. I actually read what they claimed all the hate groups are, and they're all white Christians. All of them. Right. They, 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 they don't mention La Raza or Black Panthers or, um, you know, I can name a lot of hate groups here, but it's all, um, it's just white Christians. Can you enlighten me on that? Why would the mob be going after white Christians here in America? Well, basically, they look at that as uh, their opposition. That's why they're going after it, and they want to basically break up their opposition. There was one article that you mentioned in, uh, in the past that was very interesting, is you had an interview there with uh, Charlie Rose on Edgar Brothman Jr., who um, <laughs> got into the ownership of uh, DuPont when DuPont bought out Marathon Oil back in the 80s. So in the Charlie Rose interview, uh, Edgar Brothman Jr. was telling us that he was making a billion dollars a day from DuPont. A billion dollars. Okay. That's $360 billion a year. In three years, that's over a trillion dollars of profit. How come we don't hear about that? Even yeah, who the heck are work. the Bronzemans? Why don't we hear about them? That's amazing. A, a trillion dollars in three years, and nobody even knows who they are. Right. I think people know who they are, but um, that's intentional. Obviously, they want to keep it quiet that they're basically uh, raking, our, raking our economy to that uh, level on that scale. I mean, they are literally raping the U.S. economy, costing um, the American public, the American um, economic system, trillions of dollars. You know, that's just one example of one business in three years that's a trillion dollars extracted from just one company. And you think they just stopped there at one company? Heck no. Okay. So that gives you an idea of the scale and the power these guys have. So and DuPont isn't the only thing they own. Oh, heck no. 
Okay, so they have the ADL. They're training our law enforcement. Who the ter- we have the mob training our law enforcement who the terrorists are, and they make a billion dollars a day from DuPont. Wow, what, what else? How, how do they have the ability to keep everything so quiet about what's really going on? Well, that's what we're going to investigate tonight um, and find out who they really are, okay? It's a, another term for the Brassman crime family is a term that you may hear. It's called mega, M-E-G-A, who's who and mega. Um, and we'll go back in a, as soon as we get off the current We'll just start exploring some of the history, how they got to this point. Um, some of the things they've done recently, for instance, you may have seen on C-SPAN about a year ago, they were talking about the merger of XM radio and uh, Sierra, Sierra satellite radio, that they were going to merge both of those uh, radio stations together. So who was in front of the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, in D.C., talking about the merger? It was no, none other than Edgar Brockman, Jr., so he's basically telling us that we're not going to have uh, competition in satellite radio, that it's all going to be merged. And who was he talking to on the Senate committee that was deciding all this? It was none other than Arlen Specter. Some of the people in D.C. in the background behind uh, Specter that you could see on C-SPAN knew what was really going on. I mean, their reactions on their faces looked like they were looking at the Diablo themselves, looking at those two talking to each other. Here you have the senator that uh, was involved with the cover-up the murder of a U.S. president talking with a major organized crime figure, and they're deciding for how our satellite communication radio systems are going to exist in this country. That's one example. Um, uh-huh. Another one that... Yeah, another one they're involved with is the uh, Foxwood Casino out of uh, Connecticut, supposedly is owned by the Indian tribe. But there's um, over a 70% ownership of that casino is owned by MGM um, Universal, which is owned by the Brockman Crime family. So we see that on TV. You know, you see that Universal Studios, you know, that big globe, you know, rotating around. Universal Studios, that's all them. Okay, that's some of the examples of some of the things they own. Um, when you were talking about McGreevy, uh, we had uh, um, in New Jersey there was a bank that we talked about was Commerce Bank, and they had the uh, leader of uh, Commerce Bank, who was the Camden County, New Jersey supervisor, George Norquist, Jr., tied in with the racket. Well, they kicked him out, and then they had a change in ownership of Commerce Bank, a major bank in uh, the Mid-Atlantic region, New Jersey and the surrounding states. And who took it over? Um, A Toronto bank, uh, which uh, I can't remember. I think it's called Toronto, T-O. I forget what the other part of it stands for. But the Toronto bank, I did a research on it. It's owned by the Brockman. Okay. What else do they own? Pretty much (laughs) in Canada. (laughs) <laughs> they run Canada. That's where they started from, and they run that. They run the Kadima Party in Israel, all right, which is the uh, party of Omar. And we see what he did with uh, Lebanon and Gaza as an example. So we see how they really treat people when they have uh, absolute power and control over doing what they want. That's how they will treat us, too, if they get powerful enough here. Uh, let's see. Those are some of the uh, current examples I can think of. Some other current examples. Um, the recent one is you heard Ford Motor Company was basically uh, uh, that they were going to buy out 20, over 21 million shares of Ford. And who was going to buy it out? Kirk Kavorian, the pseudo owner of the MGM Grand Casino interest. Okay? <laughs> right. He's a front man for the Brockman Crime Fund. The MGM is owned by the Brockman's out of Canada. So Kirk Kavorian is a supposedly multi-billionaire. And he really is a front, is what he is. He may be a billionaire, but he's still a front for the Brockman Crime Family and their financial dealings. What did he do about three years ago? He um, attempted to buy up General Motors. Okay? 
and you may have heard that the MGM was going to uh, uh, Kirk Hoogle, Kirk Kikorian of the MGM casinos, which is the same ones which was Foxwoods, who was trying to buy out General Motors.